and these drawings, they had the title which had the name of, and of the draw of the artist and something, but it disappeared. As maybe some of the drawings disappeared because somebody wanted to build using the existing drawings and has done a, something design and so. So they, they have been for a long time just as a part of collection of Catherine the Great in inventory, but without the name of the author. And then it was rediscovered by Mikhail Didinkin, and then the real story of collaboration, cooperation began because we needed very much the, to see the collections in Britain to recognize the places. Стал заниматься коллекцией рисунков Эрмитажа, я обнаружил очень интересные альбомы, которые были совершенно неизвестны и никогда не публиковались. Я выяснил, что они принадлежали Екатерине Великой, и оба альбома содержали коллекцию рисунков, выполненных одним мастером. В основном они были посвящены паркам и дворцу в Хэмптон-Корте. Они датированы 1777 годом и поступили в Эрмитаж вскоре после создания. Моя задача состояла в том, чтобы найти автора этих рисунков и выяснить, при как... почему они оказались в Эрмитаже и чем они были интересны императрице. Spars is not a famous painter, nobody really heard of him, uh, not even scholars uh, really knew much about him, we still don't, but there are an amazing record of the palace and they're also very valuable because they're very honest drawings of the palace, they're more like photography in many ways, so they have a fantastic detail in them, both of the buildings itself and the people who worked at or visited the palace in the 18th century, about which we know surprisingly little. Once the kings and queens left, we, did, we don't know much about the, the kinds of people that filled the palaces. I think many people today think of an English style of gardening and they will either think of a cottage garden full of flowers, rather natural looking, or they'll think of the great landscapes like Brown's landscapes. But not for many people, they won't think of that as an international style and it really was very influential and it went on influencing gardens across the world for the next century or so and then was revived again in the 21st, 20th century and 21st century. So I think that will be an eye-opener to people that this was as far away as, you know, in the cold places like Russia, where it's much harder to grow lawns or have lakes that aren't frozen half the year round. But this was very important to Catherine. She said she had an Anglomania to her friend, the philosopher Voltaire. Well, it's very refreshing because what it reassured me was how much, apart from small details, the Hampton Court Palace Gardens and the wider estate, how little it had changed in 250 odd years. It, it, it was remarkable. What had happened was you had this very formal garden that was created by William and Mary 300 years ago and gradually it became a little bit looser and a little bit less formal and it becomes even, uh, even more looser and less formal under Brown. 